Okay. All right, welcome everybody. This is the Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting. It's the 11th of August, 2020. Uh, we've got a number of topics on the agenda. Uh, Olivier, do you want me to share the agenda while we, while we go through this? Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And uh, you've got the first topic, Olivier. So let's bring it to you. Everybody see my screen okay? Yep, I do. Yep. Uh, I would just would like to turn on the full screen. Yes, perfect. So basically, um, the, the outage that we had this morning is in the um, certificate, in the Kubernetes uh, resource configuration. So basically, what we had in the past is we used to have a certificate that we bought from GoDaddy. And then when the certificate expired three months ago, we moved to a Let's Encrypt certificate. So the certificate is renewed every three months. But um, the LDAP configuration needs three components, a CA.CRT. We need the, um, the key, obviously, and the, the, the certificate for LDAP. But cert, cert, manager, cert manager do not provide a CA.CRT. So we, I had to retrieve that information from uh, Let's Encrypt website. And so basically what happened is because of the way the EDAP image was designed, we needed to pass those three parameters um, in the configuration when the container started. And the problem is because of how communities and the way we mount volumes, we needed to have those three components in the same volume. So what I did is I slightly modified the Docker image to fetch the CI, CA.CRT from a different directory. And so um, I didn't need to have that the CA.CRT from the community's resource. And what happened, but what I did to go faster, I just manually, manually modified the secrets in order to have that information in the secret as well on Kubernetes side, even if the container does not use it. So if, if you look at uh, the two PRs that I created this morning, I, I remove um, the mention of CA.CUT from um, the stateful sets. So we do not try to mount that information because it does not exist in the secret and it should not. That's one of the thing. And the second thing is I updated the, the Docker image um, to fetch, um, to correctly fetch uh, the, um, to not, sorry, to not fail if it cannot find the, that's the, the CA, the CRT in the right location. So that's basically all. Um, the, um, the way I found that, that was quite simple. Uh, I tried to connect on one of our services on Jira. Initially, I I thought that uh, my password was changed for some reason or compromise, whatever. And then I realized that the LDAP container was not running anymore. So I just look at what happened in the Kubernetes cluster. So that the LDAP container was not running. Look at the log and in the log, it told me that it tried to read a file that did not exist obviously because that file was not generated by the cert, um, by the cert, let's encrypt. Um, so basically what I did this morning to solve this, because uh, we needed the DAP service to be running again, I just modified the community secret that contain um, the secret, the certificate and the private key. And I also added CA.CRT in the, the secret. So I did the, the same fix that I did three months ago. Um, I opened two PRs. The two PRs are documented, uh, are in the Google Doc here. Once we merge those two PRs, it should be done. It should be fixed. Um, the second main issue that we may have, but it's mitigated at the moment because the way we use the LDAP Docker, the, the, the LDAP Docker image, the second issue that we may have in the future is because we switch to Let's Encrypt certificates, the certificate is renewed every three months. And the container need to be restarted every, I mean, within the three months. Um, because we, every week, we update the LDAP container based on, um, based on the latest um, updates, because we rebuild the LDAP Docker image every week to have all the latest uh, version. Um, we haven't, we haven't had the issue, but yeah, this, and, and so, so sure. yeah. that's consistent 
uh, with our JIRA container that we must restart every two weeks. Um, so that thing, if we don't restart it every two weeks, uh, has exorbitant disk usage and, and causes itself problems. So JIRA container restarts for right now, at least for me, are a, a, just a fact of life. Good. Okay. Um, but in the case of the LDAP, it should not be an issue because there is a hint check on it. So if the LDAP container does not work for some reason, the container is still then reboot. And um, it just takes a few seconds for the container to restart. So, I mean, that's one of the risks, but yeah, um, we still have to improve. But anyway, once, if we move, um, if we move to the LDAP system to the Linux foundation, uh, we won't have to work on that. So. For now, I would just um, merge my two PRs regarding LDAP once we are ready. Um, because we have ongoing releases at the moment, I don't want to impact uh, the work being done there. So I prefer to hold for a few days before merging the PRs. Thanks, Olivier. Any questions from you, Alex, or from you, Tim? No. I just got online, so I, I didn't know about the LDAP downtime. <laughs> okay. the, the service was done for 30 minutes, something like that this morning. Oh. I mean, this morning. I, time. I was still logged in, so I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, super. Uh, Olivier, thanks very much for that status. Uh, we ready for the next topic then? N upcoming releases tomorrow. Uh, so this one, Olivier and Daniel Beck, are going to monitor delivery tomorrow. I'm acting as backup if for some reason Olivier were unavailable. Uh, if Olivier becomes unavailable, uh, Daniel's plan is to start a little later so that he can do it while I'm normally awake rather than the start at roughly midnight my time. Uh, uh, but yeah. we, we don't expect any surprises there. We believe the infrastructure is stable, steady, and ready to go. Uh, upgrade guides have been written, haven't been merged yet. Um, upgrade guide and release notes, uh, but they they look good. And I think now this is Alex the first delivery of first delivery of the Windows installer on LTS that's going to be delivered same day as the build. We delivered 2.235.3 a few days after. This one we hope will be right on. And you've seen the upgrade guide proposals there. Yep, looks good to me. Okay. Olivier, anything you need to highlight there? No, that sounds great. Um, also, we have a bunch of PRs on Jenkins Infra slash release Git repositories. And I think that we should not merge them before tomorrow. We have to be sure that we do not change the release process. And uh, if we are want to change it, then we have to wait for the next weekly because it's less critical than the security release. Right. So we don't merge anything before tomorrow. And I mean, on a global, um, more globally, we don't merge anything that could impact the, um, the release process. So for example, that's why we do not merge the LDAP uh, changes. Right. In, yeah, we're in, in, that's a good point. We're intentionally taking a conservative approach until after the release tomorrow. And um, on that topic, um, I did, so I want to highlight something that's happened and I was really surprised that it worked now because it did not in the past in Kubernetes. So um, last week while Daniel was preparing the release, I um, accidentally merged a PR that updates the Jenkins version used by the release. So I updated release at CI the Jenkins that I use. So the master was restarted and it did not impact the agents. So the agents were able to correctly reconnect to the master and do the work uh, as, as usual. Um, this is not something that was working, I mean, in the past uh, with Kubernetes agents. So that, that was quite a surprise for me. Great. Um, while we talk about um, the release, there is one topic that I put at the end of the agenda that I would like to mention here. Um, I would just copy paste this here. Um, so basically, I've been investigating about different ways to reduce the cost on the Azure accounts. And one of the main costs, um, I mean, on the Azure is taking 
30 percent of the the cost is about um packages that we store on azure and the bandwidth to fetch um, the packages there so right now when we go on package of jenkins.io and we try to download a package there is an HTAccess access rule that redirects um, the request to our Azure 5 storage, which means that the Jenkins project is paying for the bandwidth for um, everything. And it, we should, I mean, th that would be better to just rely on, the, um, on our mirror infrastructure. We have quite a lot of traffic. So, so just for the network bandwidth, we are paying $2,000 per month. Um, and so this is something that we could just reduce if we move to the mirrors. Um, until today, we weren't allowed to use uh, our Mihor infrastructure because we were not supporting HTTPS. Um, so that's one of the that was one of the motivation why I investigated Mihorbit. Um, so Mihorbit is deployed on get.jenkins.io. While we still have some improvement to do there, I, I think that for package Jenkins.io it should be ready. Um, something that I would like to keep in mind for tomorrow for the release of tomorrow. Um, the behavior with mirror bits is it builds um, a, a data, um, it builds a hash for every file and then compare that hash on the remote mirror. So if for some reason the file between the mirror bits and the remote mirror the mismatch, then it falls back to um, another specific endpoint that I configured. So for that endpoint, I configured archives the Jenkins that I own to be the fallback um, because we control and we know that we have all packages available there. And so something that I would like to test tomorrow is when we do the release, obviously the file will not be propagated to all every mirrors that we have um, in our infrastructure. But I would like to be sure that we are still able to download the latest version from get.jenkins.io. While it should be working, tomorrow will be the first release where I could test that behavior. And if it really works, then I can update, and I would like to do that. I would like to update the package of Jenkins.io HT access rules to redirect, to not use Azure, but to use uh, get a Jenkins that I have to download every packages. I created, um, <clears throat> I created a Jira ticket um, about that work. Um, because the, the package that origin the Jenkins that I have is not anymore managed by Puppet, at least at the moment, the Puppet agent is disabled, it's just a manual fix. So I documented in the tickets where all all the files that need to be modified. So what I suggest is just to, for example, as a first iteration, we just update every Debian um, packages and we first look at um, if it breaks something and if it works for the coming weeks. So I just want to be clear on this. So I'm planning to, to update the file tomorrow after the release, if uh, we can correctly fetch every packages from there. That's great. Um, and so yeah, I'll, I'll put the, the link to the ticket in the, I know it's already there, so it's already there. So any question um, on this topic? Have we, we how, have we tried to see how long it takes to download the packages versus so, it depends on the mirror you get. It really depends on the mirror you get because in this case, you are really downloading. So for me, it was faster to use a local mirrors because there is what there is. There are two mirrors in um, one in Germany and one in um, Holland. But I guess it will depend on the people. There are we have at the moment six mirrors. Um, so. And all of those six, are they HTTPS enabled? Because yes, they are only, so let me share my screen so I can give you uh, a look. Just a minute, I'll enable it. Okay, got it. So try to share again, Olivier, sorry for the block. Yeah. So now the window is loading. And Zoom is not responding. Okay, now it's working. Oh yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. So I will just increase the size. So I'm going to get the Jenkins that I own. So it's exactly the same content that you have on your half. So I would just, for example, fetch Debian. So the thing that I wanted to test first 
is if you take, for example, a link for Hudson, copy link location, you just go to, um, you can specify parameters in the URL. So I'm going to ask, give me the mirror list. And in this case, for this specific file, you can see that um, no mirrors contain um, the file because that file is really old. Um, it's like one of the first Jenkins. No, it was still Hudson. So if you try to download it, um, then you will fetch the, the package from archive, the Jenkins org. And we do not test the MD, the, uh, the, the hash or whatever. We just, we just, and that's, a, that's a pullback service. But on the other side, if we want to um, test, let's say, um, one of the latest version, this one, Jenkins. I'm going to take a link, same error list. So everything is happening on HTTPS. And so right now we have six mirrors that contain um, that specific file with the with a hash that match the one on the orbit. And obviously, once we do the release, the first thing, because it's part of the process, we update OSUS and mirrors, OSUS and mirrors because we control them. But then Xmission, Serverium, and Grun, Grun RL, um, those, I mean, will be updated once they are available. So they are all only working on HTTPS anyway, because I disable HTTP, um, because the purpose of get the Jenkins that IO is to work on HTTPS only. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like. And so something that I would like also to test, and I, I mean, is about having stats about how many people download, oops. Um, oops no. So Olivier, just for my clarity then, so today when I access mirrors, mirrors.jenkins.ci.org, it's actually consistently going to an Azure, Azure vault, even though we have mirrors available. No, if you're going to mirrors.jenkins.io, you are going to mirror brain and then oh, it will okay. redirect you to one of the mirrors. I see. So okay. that, that's, that's the current behavior. It does not support HTTPS at the moment, but if you are using package of Jenkins.io, if you are using package of Jenkins.io, basically it's here, um, package that's origin Jenkins.io. Um, okay, I'm on the machine. I'm going SRV. Where is that now? That's in var. Uh, sorry, bar, way, way, package of Jenkins .io. So this is the content for package of Jenkins .io website. And you see that we have a bunch of directories. So for Red Hat, Debian, and so on. And if you go to Debian, for example, you have an HT access file. And in the HT access file, we have a rewrite condition. Um, if it's a binary slash the deb, then redirect to prod Jenkins release that blob dot core dot window dot net. And what I want to do basically is to replace this rule with this. And in this case, I just want to replace yet the Jenkins that I That's basically what I want to do. What I tried, what I tried um, several months ago, what I was working, I tried to, oops, I will just revert to this for today. Um, what I tried several months ago was to really use the rewrite rule, the initial one, so to, to, to redirect to mirrors the Jenkins that I use. But basically, it fails because uh, it does not support HTTPS, and the Debian um, package manager will fail if you try to. Right, you must that. have HTTPS. Great. Yeah. Okay. So that's 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 a change that I would like to do. So just reminder: tomorrow, tomorrow we test if Kedge Jenkins are like, um, immediately contains uh, the right um, packages, and if it does, I will start to to, to change those by manually. Um, there is another thing. I mean, any other question on this topic? No. None for me. I just tried it. It was about a second faster for me on, on okay. Git.jv. You say it was it, it was faster, yeah. Tim? Yeah, it was slightly faster for me. Interesting. Okay. So you said get the Jenkins that was faster for you? Slightly, yeah. 
that's, yeah, that's, that's impressive that's, because I mean, Azure's got a lot of work that they do in their content delivery stuff. That's very impressive. Okay, good. Yeah, but we are not. Well, yeah, but in the case of uh, Tim and me, because we are quite close in terms of location, for us, it's it's a little bit faster. Something mm -hmm. that we have to keep in mind is um, the Azure um, blob storage that we are using is located in East US too. So for 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 example, probably for you, Mark, it would be faster. But we have mirrors in your location. But for example, for people from China or Asia more globally, it will be faster to use a mirror because they have mirror closer than, 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 than Azure. Because again, we are not using the Azure CDN for this. Mm. Got it, okay. Um, so that's be, something uh, that, better. So sorry? Just wanted to say that once we have more mirrors, then they, uh, the experience should be even better. Yeah, and something regarding the mirrors, we regularly had uh, people proposing um, mirrors and we declined in the past. The main reason to that is because we initially saw that we had enough money to, um, to distribute the packages by yourself because then you have a full control uh, on, the, um, on, the, on the pipeline. But um, yeah, today we have to find alternatives and um, and relying on your house is maybe more um, important, more interesting. So we could definitely promote that and have more mirrors in the future. Um, another thing, because I'm still trying to simplify though. So any question regarding package agent, is that you? Then I will just stop sharing. Um, there is uh, one last topic, it's uh, regarding I can just continue on this one, Mark, if it's okay for you. Sure, that'd be, well, yeah, that sounds great to me. Do you want me to share again, or do you want to just... Can... Uh, you, you, you can share, you can share again, yeah. Okay, great, um, go ahead. But, but basically what's happening right now is we have two ways configure in the infrastructure, and it's not consistent between the distribution packages, but either we push uh, a sim link, a link on the mirrors, and then if you go to, let's say, Windows slash latest, you are redirected, you are using the same link, or we are using HT access. So for example, in the case of Windows, we had two configured at the same time. And so depending on the mirrors or package Jenkins, I, oh, so sorry, depending on mirrors, um, sometimes it was using the same link, sometimes it was using the HT access because we have mirrors that disable the HT access, um, basically. And so we have to find a way to, to maintain that link. Um, personally, I would like to just, but yeah, just a personal opinion, I would like to not use HT access anymore because it puts a strong dependency on, um, on Apache. And so it means that every people who, who provide a mirrors need to use Apache in order to work with our infrastructure. Um, so what I would like to do is instead of relying on configuration or a script because um, the sync link, for example, on um, on the machine to package at origin the Jenkins IO, the, the sim link is managed by Puppet, if I'm correct. So what I would like to do is to create that link when we do a new release, and so that would be the responsibility of the repository Jenkins CI slash packaging to maintain that list that that, that link. And then we could clean up every other uh, all the other location where we generate that link. Great, thanks. And Weekly and LTS are doing that now, so that's that's a relief. Great. Anything else on the PKG Jenkins IO latest link? No, that, that's all. That's the only thing that I wanted to, to highlight. So it's really, I mean, I just want to be sure that you were aware that Puppet generates some link. And so we have some file. Um, I mean, we have both HT access and file. Okay, great, thank you. Let's pop it. Need to remember that. Thank you. All right. So next topic, uh, we are almost out of our thirty minutes. Um, very brief. The Jira upgrade plan. We are currently running Jira seven point thirteen. Uh, it will end support at the end of November twenty twenty. Uh, our proposal has been to ask the Linux Foundation to host our Jira instance, but using our identity management, and they would then do the upgrade to a Jira eight version as part of that transition. Uh, we're meeting with them today. 
Uh, others are welcome to join if they wish. Uh, it's a conversation about what are the limits of what they are willing to do, what they can do for us, uh, etc. Uh, the upgrade plan is linked here. You're welcome to refer to it. It's my attempt to describe what our expectations are. We've shared that with the Linux Foundation IT team and invited them to guide and direct, to give suggestions, etc. cetera. Uh, I wanna, yeah. Go ahead, Olivier. Um, but you were talking about the identity management, so I think it's important to, to, to say that um, it's probably related to the Jira upgrade plan as well. Well, so, so my, my argument and discussion with them is going to be that we would prefer to keep them separate because I fear that identity management is a much larger thing than transitioning JIRA, than, than upgrading JIRA. Uh, I don't know, I'm not co yet confident personally that we can complete an identity management transition by November 28th. And if we, if we don't wanna go off of support, with JIRA, we need to we need to complete that transition by the 28th of November. So discussions with uh, Linux Foundation will certainly continue there. Yeah, thanks for following that. Any other topics we need to discuss here in the infrastructure meeting? No, I think it's just better to stick to the um, to the to the schedule. Um, I wanted to organize a session and to talk more about um, the Puppet infrastructure. So I wanted to do a small demo because I gave access last week to Tim about um, the machines, um, but we probably won't have the time to talk about that today. So I will probably try to schedule something with Tim in the week um, and post a chat, uh, post a link to the to the to the Google Meet Zoom. GT, whatever we'll use for the, the session. Great, excellent. All right, thanks everyone. Let's go ahead and call an end to this meeting. I will post a recording to the Jenkins, uh, Jenkins YouTube channel. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Have a good day, bye-bye.